Hello all, I am Sai and in today's video, I am bringing to you 10 practical self-help book recommendations. I read both fiction as well as non-fiction books and I am pretty sure you know that if you have been following me for a while. And the reason why I am doing this video in specific is because I was not that much into non-fiction 4 to 5 years back. But around the end of 2019, I started reading non-fiction books and in specific self-help books. I do like other kinds of non-fiction books like memoirs, biographies and such also. But I've always felt like I've gotten a lot more out of self-help books compared to the other subgenres inside non-fiction. These 10 books that I've chosen today for this video are all easy to read and they're perfectly suitable for beginners as well as seasoned readers. They all cover different topics in specific and each and every one of them is detailed in their approach at the same time very simple to read. The best part is that you'll be able to practice each and everything that the author is talking about in these books because as I mentioned in the title and thumbnail, all these books are super practical. I've got both Indian as well as international books. So without any further ado, let's get into the books right away. So the first self-help book that I'm recommending today is an Indian personal finance book and it is also one of the books which is super worth its popularity and it is Let's Talk Money by Monica Hallen. I was a bit skeptical getting into this book but trust me this is the best non-fiction book that I've read so far in 2024. I'm also planning to read the next two books that the author has written and published so far. You can see the number of tabs that I've put inside this short book and I have even more highlights than the tabs inside the book. Here the author basically talks about what all B Indian are doing that is making us not rich but stay in the same financial level that we are in when we see the society as a whole and how we have to concentrate on different kinds of investments and savings rather than the normal schemes that the generations before us have been following. It is a book that is not just great for the present time but also has a wonderful foresight. I'd recommend you to read this if you are either in or out of college. Before that it is not necessary because it might be a bit intimidating but if you are just about to start earning I'd highly suggest you to read this one and I can easily say that if I had read this book two to three years back and started practicing some of the things that the author talks about in this book financially I'd be much more secure now. So if you are going to pick only one book from this list, let it be this one, it will help you in all other aspects. Next we have a super popular social media book and the author of this book is also super popular on YouTube as well as Instagram and she's rightly so. The book is Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Dr. Julie Smith. I'm pretty sure you have watched at least a few shorts or reels of this doctor and this book is just as amazing as any of her short form content. In this book the author basically talks about different ways that you can put into practice to deal with low mood on a daily basis. Now this book does not talk about very serious mental health issues like depression, anxiety, OCD and all such stuff. It just talks about the day to day challenges that we face in terms of mental health because of so many reasons. And one of the main things that the author covers throughout this book is low mood. It's not like all of us are depressed or sad in any way throughout the day. But because of multiple reasons, all of us tend to have a low mood which inhibits our ability to do the things that we want to do on a daily basis, which in turn affects our life also. Here the author just helps us dive deep into the roots of what is causing that low mood and how we can neutralize those reasons by inculcating some daily habits. Again, it's a super practical book and it's basically just a guide on how you can keep your mental health in check and always proper. It also helps you understand whether a thing that you are dealing with right now is something which is trivial and can be treated by yourself easily or if it requires professional attention. I also have a detailed review for this book and if there are videos for any of the other books, all of them will be linked in the description. Please do check them out. Next, we have a book which is for people who are interested in manifestation and all such spiritual things and it is not a book that is totally spiritual also. It is entirely scientific in its approach but the thing that it is approaching is manifestation which is a spiritual concept and it is The Source by Dr. Tara Swart. The book is so good that I finished reading it in 2022 and I'm currently rereading the book. I'm nearly like halfway through it and I'll probably finish reading it in September itself. And how visualization as well as all the visual tools that we help to trigger our brain in order to achieve the things that we want actually happen. The author is a world-renowned neuroscientist and when you read this book, you'll be able to understand why she is so popular and why the things that she says are very easy to grasp. Okay, she's super well-versed in her field and she's able to make us understand such complex concepts in a very simple way. This book might be a little bit heavy because it has certain scientific biological terms here and there. Otherwise, I cannot say anything about this book is difficult to read at all. Even that is not difficult, okay? The author actually explains each and everything that she says and it also has a lot of exercises that you can do then and there while you're reading the book. Again, it's a very short book. It will hardly take a weekend for you to finish reading this one. And trust me, once you finish reading it, the way in which you start imagining your life will change. And once you change it, you'll also see that your life is also automatically changing. So yeah, if you're into manifesting, please do go forward and try this book. It is definitely a must read. 
The next one is a book on relationships and you can consider this book to help in both romantic as well as platonic relationships and the book is 8 Rules of Love by Jay Shetty. Now this is quite a big book and it will take a little bit of time to read but everything that the author talks about here is a blend of people skills and spirituality put together and I just love the heck out of it. Now I am a person who does not have that many problem with any kind of relationships that I have. But even I, after reading this book, was able to understand how I can make my relationships better. And if you're a person who's having some kind of conflict in any of the relationships that you might be having in your life, you can easily sit down, talk it out and easily resolve it. And it also deals with love in a very non-glorified way, which I just enjoyed throughout. It makes it as simple as just an emotion or a connectivity that you have with a person. And the love that you have with different people is different, right? You don't have the same kind of love with your partner and your parents. And it's not the same with your siblings and your friends. Each and every kind of love is different. And how you can approach all these different kinds of love using these eight rules is what the author talks about here. I think I'll probably reread this book because the first time I read it, I did not have such high expectations. But after I finished reading the book, it definitely blew my mind. And if you're having some kind of relationship problems, this is definitely a go-to book for you. Next, we have another Indian self-help book. And this is basically the best self-help book that I read last year. And it is Don't Lose Out, Work Out by Rujuta Devikar. This book was actually suggested to me by my brother. He was trying to lose some weight last year. And after reading this book, he followed certain things. And trust me, he has gotten to look younger than I am right now. And he's four years older than me. Now, I've been experiencing a lot of changes in my weight for the past two to one half years. And after following some things that the author talks about in here, it's pretty much easy to just keep the weight consistent, okay? It's basically about treating your body to be that human being and not just some kind of machinery. The author is super practical in her approach, okay? She has such a deep knowledge inside the field and she basically tells us that it doesn't matter how heavy you are. It does not have anything to do with how healthy you are at all. And after reading this book, I was totally able to understand that. And I was also able to understand why it is necessary to train with weights at least to some extent, especially after you're 30 years old. In short, I can say that this book is not for weight loss, but for understanding what workout means. Hence the title, Don't Lose Out Workout. If you have not given this a read, please do go forward and try it. It's a gem of a book. And I personally think many more people need to read this book in order to understand our bodies better. The next one is a book on productivity and time management. I have recommended Deep Work by Can Newport many times when it comes to productivity and time management before. But I think that book might be a bit intense for some people. So I'm going with a much lighter suggestion right now. But it is nonetheless lower compared to Deep Work in any way. And the book is Make Time by Jake Knapp and John Zaratsky. The only drawback for this book, if you ask me, is its price point. Okay, it's very, very high in quality. So it is quite pricey, around 600, 700 rupees for a paperback. But if you ask me if it's worth the money, it is 100%. Okay. Because the authors have kept in mind that anyone who reads this book starting from like, you know, fifth grader to anyone who's like so much older and experienced in their field must be able to understand. Okay, it's written with that in mind and it is super approachable. It's a very visual book and it does not take much time for you to read through the book and understand the concepts as such. The authors basically give us various different frameworks that we can put into practice in our daily lives itself based on the different types of needs that we have where we require more time to do certain things in order to become more productive and you know move forward in those specific areas of our life. It might look like a big book but trust me it's not. Okay, If you start reading it you'll be able to finish it in maximum one day or so because the authors just get to the point each and every time they don't beat around the bush at all at the same time it's so friendly to read okay it feels like you're sitting with a friend and they are teaching you certain things in a very nice comfortable and kind way so that you can make the best use of your time in life please don't be frightened or keep this book away because of its price because it is so pricey because it's so much worth it so if you can afford buying this book right away please do go forward and try it it's definitely one book which i think most people are not reading mainly because of its price please if any publisher is watching this video try to make a cheaper edition of this book that can be accessible to more people so yeah this is easily one book i'd highly highly recommend no matter in which stage of life you are in if you want to make the most out of your time you have to read this because it will literally help you make more time next we have a book on manifestation it's this and it is manifest by roxy nafosi it is easily one of the best self-help books that i did in 2023 okay and after reading this book i also practiced a lot of things that the author says here and it just makes the process of manifestation much more easier and enjoyable to I'm currently reading the companion for this book which is Manifest Dive Deeper by the same author. It's this blue book you can see over here. So in this book, the author basically talks about manifestation and breaks it into seven easily achievable and doable steps. And it's not like all these seven steps take a specified amount of time. Okay, 
totally depends on an individual and what part of life or what phase of life we are in that right now and how we can fast forward the process of manifestation by identifying the hurdles that we have in our lives and how we can overcome them by doing certain very simple actionable things. It also talks about self-love and how it can be totally different for totally different people. Sometimes self-love is also tough love towards yourself. The author beautifully explains it over here. I have a full length 20 minute video or something for this book which basically summarizes the entire book for you. So if you are interested in getting to know about the book a little bit more before buying it, I suggest you to watch that video which is also a link down in the description. So yeah, super practical when it comes to manifestation as a whole. So do give it a try. The next book is quite a hard book to read because of how the author has written it because it is not simple okay it's quite harsh and the book is Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Now I was a bit skeptical about reading this book because I thought that I'm not that much of an egotistical person but no matter who we are okay even the saintliest of the persons does have an ego within us okay and that ego is not good or bad it's only how we respond to it and how we handle it makes whether things happen in a good way or not so good way for us and that is this one thing which the author makes us understand by the end of the book and it is that we have that small voice in our head we have to identify whether it's our true self that is trying to move forward in life or if it is our ego trying to hold us back and keep us here itself because it feels safe and even if we don't move forward and gain much in life when we are safe, we don't end up losing anything. And that's basically the main job of the ego. It needs to keep us safe. It needs to keep us protected. It does not want us to lose anything. All these things sound good and positive and they are necessary in multiple points in our life. But if we want to move forward, we have to take a chance at times. And the ego is the part of us which holds us back from moving forward. Once I finished reading this book, I was able to identify most of the times when I was acting from my ego and when I was acting from myself. And I also want to reread this book. I'm a bit afraid because the language of the author sure is very harsh, okay? He does not even try to be kind with us here. He wants to catch our ego by its throat and make us understand that this is what's happening in you. So yeah, it'll be difficult to read. But trust me, once you finish reading this book, you'll not be the same person. The next one is a spiritual book again. And it is also a very spiritual practice. It is a short book, but a little bit difficult to read because of how old it is. And the book is Meditation and Its Methods by Swami Vivekananda. It's a very short book. I think it's not even 150 pages long, but it will take quite a bit of time to read it because of the language that the author uses here. It's a bit difficult to understand, but if you take your time, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to understand it really well. But the author just talks about what meditation is, how we need to do it, and how it will be difficult in the start to practice because it's also just a habit like anything else. And once we start doing it regularly and consistently, how it can actually just become a part of our life and not a way of living itself rather than just a practice. Since the book is very short, I cannot talk much about it without, you know, letting things out. But if you are someone who is interested in meditation and learning to meditate, this is definitely a book that can help you a lot. I've been meditating for like three and a half years now and the effects of it on me have been nothing but great. It's good for your body, it's good for your mind, it's good for your life in general. So if you are even in school, I suggest you to start meditating now. It's just five minutes a day is more than enough if you are that young. And as you keep practicing, you can decrease the duration and, uh, you know, try out different things for yourself. So yeah, just go forward and try this book. I'm sure it will help. The last book is one which focuses on our physical health and it is The Power of Posture by Renu Mahtani. In this book, the author talks about different postures and uh, yoga asanas and different kind of pranayama or breathing exercises that we can do in order to keep our bodies healthy, okay? Most of us lead sedentary lifestyles right now, especially in our generation. And I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this video, you're just sitting down and uh, watching it while you're relaxing. It's completely okay. It's completely normal right now. But we also need to move our bodies in order to keep them more healthy for a longer period of time. We don't want to get pains and joints in our 30s itself, right? Everything that the author talks about in this book, every kind of thing that she says here is easily doable and it does not take much time out of our day. It takes hardly 5 to 10 minutes each and every day to keep our body healthy and you know flexible. And the author also talks about how we all need that little bit of belly fat that we carry in order to keep our spine healthy and keep the bone structure of our body intact and proper always. It's definitely one book which I've read not many like before or even after. I think it might be available for free to read in Kindle Unlimited because I remember reading it in Kindle Unlimited only. But the paperback is also available and it's totally worth it because each and every asana that the author talks about is shown as the images step by step inside the book. So you'll probably not even have to go and consult anyone unless otherwise suggested by the author inside the book. So yeah, definitely friendly for beginners. Anyone who's from school can also read it. So just give it a try. So yes, guys, those are the 10 practical self-help books that I wanted to recommend to you today. 
If you have any other such recommendations of books which are super practical to follow, please do drop them in the comments. If they interest me, I'll also try to pick them up and read. And if not, it will be helpful for a lot many people who might be going through the comments. And if you did find this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to get more content from me, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.